in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah lift your hands to heaven let's bless him for what we're about to learn thank you for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding onto the simple on me oh rest on me let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me let your spirit the holy Rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, Holy Spirit, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your grace this grace called favor rest on me rest on me Rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me. If I were you, I'll be praying in the spirit already. It's not a song, it's a cry. Rest on me, rest on me, let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let the spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me let your spirit spirit of counsel rest on me rest on me oh rest on me Rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me. Shabalika paratus cabrende belekusiata, 
Let it rest on us, O God. Take a minute or two to just release your spirit. Rest on me, rest on me, oh, rest on me, rest on me, rest on me, the weight of your glory, rest on me, let the weight, the weight of your glory, rest on me. Mighty Shakaina, rest on me, rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, the weight of your glory, rest on me. Solomon said, Now arise, O God, and come to your resting place. Rest on me. Rest on me. This is part of the meeting. Take a minute or two. You are exercising yourself unto godliness. Rest on me, rest on me, rest on me, rest on me, rest on our lives, oh God. Shabale de bele kusia branda in jesus mighty name we pray hallelujah speak to us O god grant us illumination grant us understanding amen and amen please be seated the lord is still training us he's making us become like quivers in the hand of a mighty warrior the Bible says certain people came to David in the cave of Adullam. They were men who were distressed. They were in debt. They were weak men. But David turned them into a company that was simply called the mighty men of David. Men can be mighty based on the training that they go through. Hallelujah. When I was coming in, I saw... A group of hefty trained security persons whether from the ministry or outsourced but they all looked big macho serious determined visionary that's what happens when people are trained when believers are not trained they become weak they become ineffective and the purposes of God becomes under attack under their watch so what is happening to us in this conference ladies and gentlemen we must appreciate that God is training us. And the way we are trained in the kingdom is by light. Capacity to see. Capacity to understand. When your consciousness, your comprehension is heightened in the spirit, then you truly become a person of power. Hallelujah. So I'll take another dimension from where... I don't want to interrupt my teaching of yesterday i'll finish it up in the night but still connecting with this the lord placed it very strongly in my heart to bring us it's a training session that is going to be happening right now most believers are powerless because they are not trained i said it yesterday in ignorance there is no power in ignorance there is no dominion Let's start off with 1 Timothy 2 from verse 1 to 4. This was Paul the Apostle mentoring his son Timothy, who 
evolved to become a mighty man now timothy was not one of the first sets of apostles in fact he was not even there on the day of pentecost timothy was not even there when the early church started it was after paul encountered the lord jesus christ and among the many fruits of his apostolic ministry one came who was called timothy a trusted son indeed and then here's what he tells him i exhort therefore four verse one okay we're right i exhort therefore just leave us two first of all that supplications prayers watch this now are you seeing what he's telling him supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks that means they are not the same thing be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty he's revealing the factors in the spirit that translates to peace within a territory that if you want peace quietness go back to verse 2 let me just digress and explain that if you want peace quietness godliness and honesty you must do verse 1 any territory that does not have people back to verse 1 my dear media people if there are no people who can make supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks for all men that territory will always be under attack now let's go to verse 3 this is my emphasis for it is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior please read verse 4 together if you can see it ready one to read who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth one more time who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth Paul reveals two burning desires in the heart of God. He says the first and the greatest of God's desire for men is that they be saved. And then that when they are saved, his next desire is that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. They come unto the knowledge of the truth. God is so determined to see that believers come unto the knowledge of the truth to the point that he invented a strategy within the body to ensure and insist that believers come into that comprehension it was a strategy that god invented as his commitment to seeing that all those who are saved also become people of knowledge the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 this is his strategy he gave some apostles in fact back down to verse 10 that he that descended is the same that ascended that he might feel all things so that you get the context yes and he gave gifts to men giving some apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers why for the maturing the word perfecting there's the word maturing of the saints that the saints in their maturity will do the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of christ verse 13 it says until we come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ men can evolve to come into the fullness of christ and yesterday i began to challenge us if you recall that the destiny of every believer in christ is to evolve until you become a living manifestation of the glory of god remember the teaching never forget it for the rest of your life that my destiny in christ is not just to be a doctor not just to be an engineer not just to be a pastor an apostle a prophet all of those are just geographies of your witness but your destiny your prophetic destiny in christ is that you become a manifestation of the glory of god your life becomes a display of the multifaceted dimension of god 
Ephesians 2 and verse 10. It says to the intent, we are his workmanship, it says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, it says, which God had before ordained that we should work in them. So there is an ordination for every believer in Christ that we should work in certain dimensions. Ephesians 3 and verse 10, it says, now to the intent that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multi-sided wisdom of god hallelujah now in acquiring spiritual knowledge please listen in acquiring spiritual knowledge not every spiritual information is useful for your growth it is important that you understand this just because the information is spiritual does not mean it adds up to your growth there are many spiritual information that are not within the curriculum of the believers growth it is not everything spiritual that we have been mandated to learn the realm of the spirit is a vast realm with so many dimensions of knowledge and some of this knowledge are profitable for your excelling some of this knowledge are detrimental to your growth are we together now it is not every kind of spiritual knowledge that is for the consumption of the believer the same way it is not every kind of tree you find around it's not every kind of food you find around that you eat just because it looks edible does not mean it is healthy for your consumption am i right on that there are certain fruits that look beautiful look wonderful and once you want to touch them a nutritionist or an agriculturist will hit your hand and say no 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 don't touch that fruit it looks beautiful but the moment you take it you are dead in minutes they use some of those trees to extract poison and they you know all kinds of things from them this is how it is with with the realm of the spirit there are many believers right now who in their pursuit for knowledge have dappled into a lot of things and our generation is a generation that has such a great appetite for knowledge and that is very important while that is commendable on one hand many people have delved into all kinds of knowledge and believe me when i tell you in this work i have met a few people who have become what is not like christ and it was knowledge that made them become like that there were two trees in the garden of eden the first was called the tree of life the second was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil both good and evil were connected in that tree so when you you ate of the second tree whatever you know prophetic significance eating means in that sense you partook of that tree there would be some good in it but with it will come a dangerous side effect are we together there are people who have read books there are people who have encountered spirits that have downloaded certain information and upon acting on those information they found themselves becoming more antichrist i know people who have been held bound in hospitals simply because they started acquiring certain kinds of knowledge from spirits are we together now most of the pseudo with all due respect the pseudo christian expressions and errors today have come because people pursued knowledge they were open to the realm of the spirit and they consumed just everything they found knowledge is food what food does to your body is what knowledge does to your spirit what food does to your body is what light knowledge does to your spirit the bible says for a man to live effectively he lives by food and words a man cannot live by food alone he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word so men live by food but they also live by words they live by information they live by light is god helping someone already so most believers have doubled into all kinds of things i remember many years ago true story uh, then i was in zaria and um after service this group of fine young men just come to me and while counseling people and one of them stood very bold very audacious very confident and i'm looking at this gentleman i'm saying wow this must be a very fine young man 
man of God. And then I see two people across. And then I say, okay, so what can I pray for you for? True story. Then so he looks at me and says, well, I am me now, Joshua Selman. They said, I am John the Baptist. And that that gentleman standing is Jesus. True story. If I'm joking, I will tell you I'm joking. And that they came to replicate what happened in scripture. I thought they were joking, you know, just Gentile. I, I laughed it over, but I found out they were serious. The other guy that stood there was, I don't know whether it was John or something. I mean it, literally, a replica of these disciples. And that young man stood boldly. He was not, not, I mean, he just came and said, look, do what John did to Jesus and let me leave. And then I looked at them immediately. I discerned that something had gone wrong. These gentlemen were sincere. Either they were wrongly mentored or they were exposed to wrong knowledge. Just because it is in the Bible does not mean it is the word of God. Hmm. Listen and learn. This Bible is a compendium of the speakings of many, 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 many spirits. In this Bible, Satan spoke. In this Bible, men spoke from their backslidden state. In this Bible, the Spirit of God spoke. In this Bible, Jesus spoke. In this Bible, heathenistic kings spoke. There are three layers to scripture. If you're a man of God here, please listen. It will help you to be able to mentor and build your people. The first layer of scripture is called a historic and an archaeological layer. So in the, in the most basic form, the Bible is a book of archaeology and history. You don't have to be born again to read the Bible. You can read the Bible as an interesting capture of historic events. And it will give you historic enlightenment, archaeological enlightenment. There are people today who are not godly, but have had to make reference to Bible information in writing their PhD thesis. It has nothing to do with spirituality. Are we together? So there is a historic and archaeological layer in scripture. Number two, there is a doctrinal layer in scripture. This is really where edification comes from the believer. There is a doctrinal layer. So there is an intelligence that the spirit of God grants unto a man. A man of God and a believer. And within the stories, within the parables, within the scenarios, in the midst of history, you will be able to piece out light. Established precepts in the spirit called doctrine. Then number three. There is a prophetic layer to the Bible. This one has to do with a unique expression of the Spirit of God upon you. That you will see certain things that are not necessarily doctrines. But then they have within them the character of Christ. And can become a template for your own victory. Are we together? For instance, walking around Jericho was a prophetic action. But not a doctrine. You cannot teach people to walk around because according to scripture, there are three conditions for any body of knowledge to become a doctrine. Number one, it must be represented in the Old Testament. Number two, it must be captured within the ministry of Jesus. Number three, it must be practiced by the early apostles. If it does not pass through these three tests, it cannot be called a doctrine. Doesn't mean it is error. But it means it cannot be an established precept that you use to build believers. Are we together now? You need to understand this so you appreciate what I'm about to teach you. So there, there, are, there are three kinds of error in the body of Christ today. The first is what the Bible wants. It says the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. And they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. So the first dimension or the first error in the body of Christ today is called the error of apostasy. A deviation from the precepts of God. Teaching the doctrine of demons. You don't have to be demonic. To teach the doctrine of demons you just have to be mentored along the lines of the doctrine of demons are we together you can be very sincere but be a victim of the kind of mentorship platform you were part of 
so apostasy number two the second error that god is correcting within the body of christ is the error of imbalance exaggerating truth beyond the scope of their spiritual relevance just because it is truth in the bible does not mean there is a space that truth in scripture occupies are we together now sanctify them by your truth he says your word is truth there is a place that prayer occupies there is a place that fasting occupies there is a place that giving occupies are we together there is a place that diligence occupies there is a place that unity occupies now the challenge is the moment you single out a particular body of knowledge and spread it beyond its scope of relevance it begins to destroy people even nutritionally speaking we are taught that there are six classes of food and all of them are important perhaps not equally important but holistically important they complement themselves to create a healthy being a healthy organism am i right on that by the time your passion becomes fats and oils and everybody who comes around you that's all you serve fats and oils and then you say ignore protein ignore carbohydrates now you are getting into error it is a major problem that god is is solving right now within the body of christ the error of imbalance and it comes from sincerity you don't have to be evil to be a victim or to communicate imbalance it is the side effect of the way god trains men so if god has called me watch this now to the apostolic ministry because of the nature of my call spiritual activities like fasting like prayer are we together now encounters and certain dimensions of spiritual reality they become more real to me than other aspects like administration like excellence like finances usually those things will not be captured in my training because god will not want to distract me but they are needed in my life it's just that if god should now bring them they would distract me he's already giving someone else that assignment and god's expectation is that i will respect that person's training and receive the benefit are we together now so if i become a mighty man of god by fasting by praying by consecration by study of scripture where you cannot deny the results that i have you see that so chances are excellent when someone says how about administration i say forget that it was not god did not it was not part of my training so i do not need it and it has destroyed the body of christ just because it was not part of your training does not mean that it will not be part of your destiny god already allocated different dimensions of himself to people and the secret is focusing on your area of training to gain mastery there while appreciating the unique gift of other expressions so that it will make you holistic so you can be a great man of god powerful but people are stealing you have no knowledge of administration you have no knowledge of excellence there are a few people who can you are anointed you are great but people cannot come to your church the reason is not because you have failed in your call you have refused to embrace other dimensions that make you holistic the second error the error of imbalance so there are many sincere preachers who are anointed and great but they are poor there are many people who are rich but carnal they don't want to hear anything about spiritual activities because the moment they found money they believe that money is the clearest expression of faith and so once I have money there's no how you can say I do not have faith I can use money to do a lot of things so if you say where is your faith i show you my car i show you my house i show you estates and then i beat my chest and i say i have faith but unfortunately that is not a measure of faith you see that now so apostasy and then the error of imbalance the third error that god is helping the body of christ to be delivered from is called the error of indifference the error of indifference it stems from focusing on yourself and not the larger body it's an error the error of indifference that means whatever happens to believers 
whatever happens to churches it can go places provided you are all right are we together so what is happening to the church in asaba is none of my business you see in that kind of mindset whether a pastor is suffering whether the pastor is going through an attack is none of my business provided i am doing well as a person is the error of indifference it comes from selfishness god gives us the responsibility of watching one another's back in the spirit while we serve him are we together now that what becomes the pain of one is the pain of everyone what becomes a joy of one is the joy of everyone so when you hear that god granted a man of god grace and he bought land it is a plus to the entire uh, you know program of god not that is something that well that's his business provided so there are many people whose minds are narrow all they are concerned about is my program my meeting my church my member my sermon my reputation my spirituality and the body of christ can be suffering left and right provided it does not affect them that was the mistake that esther wanted to make and mordecai warned her and said god took you there now you are enjoying in the palace but there is a plot somewhere to annihilate all the jews it will eventually include you and mordecai said could it be that god raised you for such a time as this personally she did not have any problem remember she was the wife of the king but her man was plotting already he had gotten permission to annihilate the jews and they use witchcraft to select a date and the only person who was in the position to help was the one who had the ears and the heart of the king there are many people who are given grace not just for themselves alone but also for others it is the reason why from the abundance of that which we have received we freely give we teach as an attempt to bring our contribution towards strengthening the body if as a result of this conference now a man of god here a campus fellowship president a young man who is a mighty prophet apostle in the making if you shift away from the path of error to accuracy and you love jesus god has used this teaching to help you and help all those who will be built under your grace are you seeing how it works now there are six foundational bodies of knowledge that every believer needs to have needs to know if you want to become of stature i told you recall my teaching that not every spiritual knowledge is part of your curriculum of growth i want to give you six fundamental foundational bodies of knowledge anyone you want to know god and to grow to become a person of growth you must expose that person to these six dimensions of knowledge and as i run through this list i want you to check with your own life if you find ignorance in this area any of the areas as a pastor as a man of god let that become your project immediately because your stability in the spirit rests upon your knowing these things are you ready number one the first body of knowledge that all believers must be exposed to foundationally if you desire to be of stature is that you must know god you must know god the father and you must know jesus the son you must know god and you must know jesus we began to discuss that we'll finish up in the night proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 proverbs 9 and 10 the bible says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom is that in your bible and the knowledge of the holy is true understanding you do not yet have understanding until you know god no matter what else you understand if god is not part of it you really do not have understanding yesterday we read from john 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying and he says this is life eternal that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent no believer 
will become a person of power and grace until you know God until you know Jesus and yesterday I began to introduce us to the pathway to knowing God I said number one you must know God through his nature and character we'll finish up the remaining in the evening but are you getting this now many believers want to command signs and wonders John G Lake TL Osborne of blessed memory Renhard Bonke all of these great men some today who have joined the cloud of witnesses the strength their dexterity the level of energy that they imparted upon a generation for Jesus Christ it came from their knowing God and knowing Jesus Renard Bonke made prophetic statements and he said Africa shall be saved he said this today we are fruits of his cry he cried for decades literally gave himself to Africa I remember those days growing up as a little boy my father used to buy there used to be this video called better max it was like vhs but it was a smaller the uh, what they call it the disc that you slot in was smaller it was full of reinhard bonke crusades the first time i watched the video of fire burning witchcraft activity without anyone setting it on fire was in a reinhard bonke crusade one of the African nations, they brought skulls and they brought a lot of things. And while they were praying, nobody lit it on fire. Fire came, not from heaven, just like that. Ah, may God restore these days in the name of Jesus Christ. May God restore men that walked upon the earth like God. Very unassuming man. I remember standing in his crusade and the kinds of impartation that I got very childlike explanation of the gospel you can even be angry for some of us who are obsessed about revelation say what am i in this crusade ground for but you watch the power that backs that understanding with that childlike faith you would watch people jump out of the wheelchairs but today we preach volumes of revelation and not even a headache is being healed there is something that we need to correct it is the knowledge of god I can tell you some of these men were not educated but one thing they, they knew God if they told you God said believe it God said hallelujah in Nigeria here history has captured poorly so unfortunately but history has captured men and women who walked upon the soils of our nation there are a few of them that you know like Archbishop Benson Idahosa Apostle Babalola of late but they are not the only ones so even within the southeast there were men and women I, history did not do justice in capturing men and women who commanded power and grace it's only the ones that history reveals that we know some of these men never made it to have global visibility but within the scope of their assignment they were powerful they were some of them if you came to their midst it was as if you were in the throne room the kind of power that they wielded a woman would come barring and they would only carry a handkerchief and throw it on the woman and say go and bring your children that's it no prayer whether she had a womb or not this woman will return with triplets Kai. the knowledge of God this man knew God I remember someone who wanted to harass one of the old fathers in Nigeria history would tell us and he was angry wanted to come around his mountain and he told him he said you step your feet one more step and you're on the ground and the man had to stand truly this man did business with god bar to a point that even when they were in error god will honor their word and then correct them later on they literally spoke like gods upon the earth and i see a revival of those days coming back honestly conference i have seen it in my visions one of the denominations in this nation i will not mention name because i'm on air about three years ago i was praying it's a denomination that started well and then many things went wrong but i was praying and i had a very strange vision i saw light from heaven coming back into a structure that looks like that denomination it returned back 
and God told me he's revisiting that denomination because of a covenant that he had with their founders because God is a covenant keeping God I remember that time I went to preach in a church and I announced it and from some of the unexpected places you will see the kind of young people that God is going to be raising unexpected places the knowledge of God the first knowledge that you need are you ready for number two blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God oh, holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God number two the second foundational spiritual knowledge you must have if you want to be of stature and power in the spirit is that you must know who you are in Christ you must know who you have become today in light of who Christ is there are many people who want to do exploits in the spirit but they have not paid attention to knowing who they have become it is not just a word of faith cliche who you are in Christ with all due respect, even many who teach these things clearly do not understand. The believer has become a brand, a species of a person in Christ. There is all the difference in your life by reason of your encounter with Christ. Hallelujah. Nicodemus watched Jesus for a long time. And he said, is this really the son of Mary? No. If this guy were a man alone, he would not be able to walk these things. He comes to him and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, not born of a woman. He redefined Jesus correctly. That although you pass through the womb of a woman, we will not allow that womb deceive us. We know that this kind of result cannot come from a man who has come from a woman. We know that thou art a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him there are certain results that men cannot produce it is not affordable within the world of men and so if men seek to produce it there has to be a regening the Bible calls it a regeneration literally hallelujah how does a man speak to you and says by this time tomorrow and the gates of your destiny open men cannot do that that is not that is not is not available within the world of men men can walk men can talk men can cook men can eat but signs and wonders influence extraordinary manifestations this one is beyond the scope of homo sapiens you have to become another kind of species are we together yes if you stand before pharaoh just as a man then you may not survive it if you stand before the darkness the spirits that are around asaba and generally the south east south south and you just want to say look uh, you are 500 years in witchcraft 200 years in witchcraft i've come to destroy the shrine be careful you may face casualties that will make your life a memorial a testimony that you should know God first before confronting Pharaoh most believers do not know who they are and I'm not just talking of mentally knowing it I am light I'm salt I'm the head I'm not the tail you see those who are saying it, it's as if they are reciting a poem in, in a primary school I'm the head I'm not the tail I'm the light of the world I'm a, I'm a you know all those things and you no conviction it is not true if you believe half of the things you have confessed about you ladies and gentlemen when the angel appeared to Gideon he never called him a weak man never called him a hiding man mighty man of fellow and he said don't insult me if that is true about me what is why has this calamity befallen us the least of my father's tribe and the least from my lineage but when god allowed that revelation to sink into him so i am a mighty man of valor 
he said now go in this thy might what is the might the knowledge that has come that you are not weak again and the bible says he blew a shofar and 33,000 32,000 people showed up a man who was hiding now had the courage to lead a battalion to defeat the Midianites there are things when you know about yourself complex low self-esteem all of these things is not an issue of counseling there is a revelation of who you are in light of who Christ is it must become a reality man of God listen to me in the name of Jesus when you know this about yourself there is nothing God tells you that you will not believe he can make happen through you hallelujah God has done something to me there is a confidence that he has given me there is nothing God says to do that I do not believe every time I read the Bible and I read what he says about me I believe it for instance you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you I believe that statement when I was staying in one room I believe that statement when I could not afford maybe ten hundred thousand naira I believed it there are things that you can believe about yourself he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm listen it matters what you believe about yourself wounded people wound others frustrated people frustrate others even if you are a preacher if you are not healed by the revelation of who you are in Christ you will find yourself interpreting life from the lens of your insecurity you will injure members you, every time you see people rising you become threatened when young people now start rising under you you become threatened the awareness of who you are in Christ gives you the comfort to lift others not just to celebrate them if you don't have this revelation you will fight every other man of God who is not you you will when you hear that God is raising some young man in a campus in Asaba at the day the gentleman comes you will find a way of pinning him down are we together when you use one candle and light a hundred others you will not even know which one lit which but the first candle is confident enough to say I've done my assignment even if I look the same like the ones that I lit are we together when Jesus was raising the apostles you would never see him try to struggle for position and say you guys are trying to fight me you don't know who I am no if you saw him and them you would not even know who was Jesus when they came to look for him they were confused listen if you know who you are in Christ you will have the grace to be able to even support another man of God when he's doing a program and it's not your program and say I hear that you are doing a great job may God bless you may souls be saved and you mean it from your heart most of the troubles and the hatred going up around the body of Christ can I tell you is as a result of wounds that have come from backgrounds you just listen to me there are many businessmen preachers anointed but they are they ignored the wounds that came from their childhood some of them were not believed by their parents some of them were ignored and from that standpoint they do not even know that while you are pressing into Christ there is a healing that you need yourself that is why Jesus is called a great physician there are some of you seated right now the reason God has not announced you is that there is a an inner work of healing that needs to come to you you grew up hearing everybody say you will never make it you spent 10 years for a four-year course that that low esteem is still in you if you become a pastor with that kind of mindset you will kill your music director as he's rising kill your assistants kill, and you will hate yourself for doing that but you will not be able to help yourself it will be like an addiction to drugs when people see me they say apostle why do you celebrate ministers you sow into people you do things and all of that you are just you live a happy life is as if and i tell them i said i was not born like that i allowed the great physician to do a work in my spirit not just to give me an anointing when god revealed to me the level of his jealousy for me how far he's able to go for, that that is the lens from which i interpret things that's how i love people so you can forgive you can forbear you can ignore whatever it is hallelujah 
praise the name of the Lord. And as I'm speaking right now, the great physician is doing a work of healing to someone. I re, Listen to what I'm telling you. Wounded people will wound others. A wounded spouse will wound her husband or the wife. And be wondering, why am I doing this? There are people today who rejoice when others are in pain. They are not wicked people. They have just gone through so much pain. They are angry when they see people rejoicing. It's true. Just because you happen to find your way to the pulpit does not mean you are healed. You have to lie down on that surgical bed and allow the great physician come and do a work within you. Are we together now? If Joseph was not healed, do you know what he would have done to his brothers? But there was something he knew. How do you carry your brother, remove his coat of many colors, throw him into a well, sell him to the Egyptians, and then that gentleman goes to the house of Potiphar and then trouble again. Potiphar's wife came to complicate his life and he went to the prison. The Bible does not tell us how long. Then a wine presser who would have helped him added two years to his pain again. Then he comes out and becomes a prime minister. If you are not healed, the first people to summon are your brothers and slaughter them one by one as a lesson. Healed people can look through the lens of their pain and say you did it for evil, but God has turned it for good. Are you learning now? Knowing who you are in Christ is not just about being a Pentecostal. That is where your healing comes. Many people do not take the time to allow God heal them by revealing to them who they are. So the moment you see a member in your church, maybe richer than you, buying something nice, you are watching, okay, I need to go and get, and that burden just destroys you for nothing. The pressure to prove a point, the pressure to prove you are rich, the pressure to prove you are the most anointed in the church is unnecessary. Just the revelation of who you are. I am light. I am salt. He calls me a blessing. It doesn't matter what social media says. How many people today would preach a message and put it online and have three or four likes and shares and they will go back crying and they are depressed? Why? Because there is something about your identity. Oh, but Joshua Selman did this and look at hundreds of thousands and millions of people. My message has been there four months, only four people. What if those four people were four congregations that use your message and it blessed them? Identity crisis is one of the cause of hatred, one of the cause of these things. Listen, if you have been trusting God to bring unity to the body of Christ within this region, I am telling you the key. It will not come just by discussing and shaking hands. No, there has to be an inner work of healing. That even if you are a pastor with 10 members, you know that the price of every one member is the blood of Jesus. And if it is only one member you have, it is such an honor for you to be trusted by God to build, to mentor that one person. So you will rejoice with the one who God has blessed with 10,000 members and not just say it's not about crowd. Uh -uh. Is someone learning? I live a very happy life as a man of God. Sincerely, I tell you under God, I live a very, very happy life. If you look at me today and say, Apostle Joshua Selman, I think you are a witch. I will tell you, no problem. May God bless you and help you. The day you need the service of that witch, I will be available to help you. <laughs> are we together? Yes. Wounded people wound others. Insecurity is a product of identity crisis. Even psychologists teach us. There are people today who if they come for a meeting and they don't sit in front, it will be as if half of the anointing has disappeared. No. Number three. Is someone learning? The third fundamental knowledge 
that every believer must have i hope i'm not wasting your time if you desire to rise to attain stature and pastors as i'm teaching you this i'm already giving you a guide as to how to bring out your messages listen you don't have to bring new messages to prove you're a pastor we are mandated to remain fresh not necessarily new the body of truth that builds the believer is finite you will exhaust it in your pastoral ministry what will keep you going is freshness not newness this passion for newness is what has brought in error because everyone wants to say something that has never been said no the thing that is is the thing that was and is the thing that will still be the curriculum for the believers maturity is fixed it is called doctrine the latin word is doctrina a body of knowledge that turns a disciple to become like his master are we learning very important so number three let's hurry up what is the third body of truth that you must know you must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program you must know your place don't assume that you understand what I'm saying you must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program not everybody will have international ministry not everybody will be able to pack this auditorium full of people can i tell you one of the ways you become distracted in life is stepping out of the zone of your call and engracing just because of the pressure to look successful success for the believer is not the same as for the unbeliever unbelievers have certain parameters that they use to measure success but success for the believer is fulfilling your god-given mandate to his expectation that is it if your assignment is to give birth to jesus and you become an excellent chef you become an excellent doctor and you don't end up giving birth to jesus you will not be called mary are we together now mary's assignment was to see the successful delivery of he that will be the savior of the world and in doing that she fulfilled her assignment you must know your place all believers must be taught to know their place hebrews 10 and 11 and 7 paul was speaking and he said talking about jesus lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will there are aspects in ministry you will never find me there not because i'm ignorant in those areas but it is not part of the scope of my call if god revisits me in the future and adds it to the curriculum of my call i will faithfully carry it out are we together if i'm not a man of god and god tells me your assignment is to sweep this stage i would do it with all my heart and for the rest of my life we need to redefine our idea of success in the body of christ so that people don't come under pressure chances are excellent that when you see joshua selman coming and the protocol and you guys were singing beautifully yesterday they put rapper all over me and i was wondering what am i doing with this and they said it's a way that they do a grand welcome here so honored for the hospitality i'm sure someone will be watching and say god my turn must come listen let me just warn you now in love eh? let me just encourage you you will be surprised that in the realm of the spirit you are higher in faithfulness than me it's difficult for you to believe because in this world we only celebrate those men clap for not those who do well am i doing something wrong hallelujah sound people please help us huh this noise it's not a vision huh i'm here you're hearing it too yes <laughs> hallelujah i needed to be sure that i'm not hearing something are we together in this world it's not necessarily those who do well that are celebrated if the whole world claps for a fool he becomes a celebrity if the whole world frowns at a wise man even if he's crucified on the cross he looks like a failure so you need to be careful find your place in god's program that includes men and women of god 
God has given you a church, you are a pastor over a local assembly, I want you to pour your heart to those precious people. Give them the best. Don't leave the people and you want to do international crusades around the world. Just because you want to be known, you get into debt, you get into prison, you are persecuted, they never give you a visa because the grace is not there. Hallelujah. Are we learning? You must know your place. This gentleman is playing keyboard for me right now. Your wonderful sound people are seen to it that the sound is wonderful, conducive, the media people are there. Everybody is in his place. That's why this program is running well. When it's time for the worship team to come up, I sing, but I will not come up and hold the mic and say, sit down, let me sing. You will know that, that God, no, 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 no. I sit patiently and wait for my turn. Are we together now? Yes. The energy God gave you is for your assignment. If you look weak, you are using that energy for something else. God has measured what he gave you and gave you energy sufficient. In your assignment, there is no weakness and there is no weariness. Most people have depleted themselves today because they are finding themselves depleting strength in an area where grace is not. Sometimes people look at me and say, Apostle, you travel all around and you are doing this. I tell you, in the last one month, without exaggeration, I've not rested from pillar to post, pillar to post. I returned here from Lagos directly. And from here by tomorrow now, I'm back straight for the miracle service. This is my life. The reason is because there is grace for it. That's why God defends his name. It's not a call for carelessness, but there is grace. You will now try to do this and find out that you wake up and part of your leg may not wake up again with you and your hand and you may be talking, you will not even know you are in a hospital because something has happened to you. Say amen. Provided John the Baptist was within the scope of his assignment, he insulted the Pharisees and nobody could catch him because there was a grace that covered him. But the moment he came out of his assignment, an offense took him somewhere. They put him in a prison. The man that ordained Jesus. And look at how he died. A little girl demanded his head on a birthday. Is that how God rewards those who serve him? The Bible says of all the prophets until John, including Moses, including Elijah, none was the greatest do you know what made him great because he was the one who ordained jesus into ministry all the other people looked forward to the coming of jesus of all the prophets he was the only one who saw jesus and ordained him and yet when he came out he could insult people call them brood of vipers call them all kinds of things and they had no power to harm him your immunity is in your assignment The third kind of knowledge that every believer must know. Pastor, you will raise a weak people until you let them know their place. You will let them know that everybody does not have to be on the pulpit to be useful to God. There are many young people today who have no business being on the pulpit. But simply because we have trained them to believe that the zenith of spirituality is to become a preacher. And so there are many businessmen who are wasting away on the pulpit there are many inventors and educators wasting away on the pulpit because we have given a narrative that if you are a man of god on the pulpit you are more superior to any other assignment it is not true jesus without joseph of arimathea will never be buried in the grave jesus without simon of cyrene will never hang on the tree are we together now yes Jesus without the disciples, they already paid to bury the truth of the gospel. It took certain men to give their lives to continue it. When I challenge people, I tell them not everybody must be a preacher to be relevant in the spirit. But everybody must be spiritual. Everybody can carry fire in whatever dimension. The goal is not to be a preacher. The goal is to be a spiritual person doing the business of God. 
as a faithful witness if we're together say amen. amen number four let me run very quickly the fourth foundational knowledge that every believer must have this is very important and i'll talk a lot about that tonight you must understand how god operates it's called the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11 you must understand how God operates. His modus operandi. The way he operates. He answered and said unto them. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Please look at me. Believers. You only excel in this kingdom. To the degree to which you understand the ways of God. The Bible says he made known his ways to Moses. But his acts to the children of Israel. Before Moses cried that God should show him his glory. He prayed that God should show him his way. I think that should be Exodus 33, 13. I don't know. I hope I get that right. Show me your way. Now therefore I pray thee. If I have found grace in thy sight. He says show me your way. Then when we get to verse 18, he now says, show me your glory. It's his way that leads to his glory. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. This is what the Lord commanded. Moses told them that this is what the Lord commanded that you should do. And the glory shall appear unto you. Hallelujah. God is a God of patterns. A pattern is a predefined methodology. A predefined methodology. A predefined methodology. Women, there is a way to make soup. Am I right on that? Just because you have the correct ingredients does not mean you will make the soup. I know there are some of you who are, who are champions of all kinds of soup. All we need to do is to bring the ingredients, get out of the kitchen and give you time. We can salivate in the parlor while we're waiting patiently. And two, three hours, the meal is ready. Because you know what to do. Listen, excelling in the kingdom comes on the strength of the knowledge on what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Do you know what to do to prosper? Do you know what to do to have people come to listen to you? Do you know what to do to remain in longevity and, and strength and vitality? Do you know what to do to ward off the arsenals of darkness? He says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, Psalm 82, 5, 6, and 7. And the whole, the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you, not some of you, are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men, and fall like one of the princes. You must know the ways of God. When someone comes to you, say as a man of God, and says things are not going well in my life, what do you tell such a person? Oh, let's pray. Father, help this man. You didn't help the man. The knowledge of the ways of God helps you to define solutions for people. You know what they need to do. A rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, Good master, what must I do? Very responsible young man. What must I do to be saved? I know that there is a path that leads to salvation. What must I do to prosper? What must I do to rise? What must I do to be free of causes? That is the language of faith. What must I do as proof that I believe you? What instruction are you going to give me? The first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account is found in John chapter 2. The wedding in Cana of Galilee. Wine finished. And by the time we get to verse 5. Mary brings the disciples to Jesus. And then gives them a very profound instruction. She says whatever, whatsoever he tells you to do. He says do it. Do it. Don't just think it. Don't just wish it. Do it. We excel in the kingdom because of knowledge can i tell you sincerely and with all humility i stand by the god of heaven every result today that god 
has granted the privilege to have and command can be reproduced in any nation of the world an architect how many of you agree with me that i can replicate this building in abuja i can replicate this building in london all i need is the plan the architectural plan am i right on that i don't need to carry this building even if i snap this building with a phone it does not guarantee that i will replicate it you will need a plan but it's possible for a man to never have seen this building and just with the plan he will replicate it if you were blinded in asaba and taken to lagos you will open your eyes and think you are still here yet you've been translocated the power of patterns patterns forerun the glory of god listen to me everywhere you see the manifestation of the glory of god it is an attestation that his patterns have been kept earlier this year we were in the united kingdom to have a conference and god did many mighty things and i remember in one of those videos or one of those sessions i think it was the first or second night so i see someone who is unable to walk and before tens of thousands of people i look at the person and i tell the person walk you don't go overseas in nigeria they can pity you nigerians are very they can hide things and say okay no problem we forgive you you did a lot of nonsense but we forgive you you just know god next time don't try that nonsense again they can hide that part maybe edit that video and just forgive you but someone who i mean these guys don't care if they are not healed they'll tell you they are not healed hallelujah you can literally end your ministry before the whole world and right there someone was asking me was a dear friend and he said apostle honestly i'm a man of god too i want you to tell me the truth what i mean so this thing you went to reproduce this result there and i said the, the point is if you look at me you will be misled it's not me it is a pattern if you carry that pattern with you the way they favor you in asaba is the way they favor you in london is the way they favor you everywhere it's true do you believe what i'm telling you yes a few years ago i returned i think it was from south africa and i had a meeting in lagos i was rushing to london just when covid was about to start and then because i finished the meeting late um they said i cannot i mean the the, the door the door of the aircraft is closed and unfortunately i cannot make it i called the man of god and i said i'm sorry i may not be able to make it tonight and he said please people have been expecting and you know the way people are here they've registered i can have a legal case someone can be angry you know and, and so on and so forth and i said whoa what do we do now so one thing led to the other they spoke with the the manager and he said okay we'll halt everything we'll open the aircraft for you but you cannot come in with any luggage can you imagine traveling without your luggage i would only be allowed to carry my laptop bag and i said but my things are there my clothes and everything and i was only going just to honor the meeting and return and i remember my protocol looking at me and i smiled i told him i said till i return and he was laughing at me because i knew already it was not only my bag i was carrying a pattern the same pattern of favor before i arrived london i'm just saying this because i'm training leaders and speaking to people before i arrived there someone had given i think over two or five thousand pounds he said i heard that apostle is coming and he's not coming with his bag here is this money let him shop whatever it is i returned back after two days with two bags and i went see no matter what you lose don't lose the pattern the assignment of a man of god is to reveal patterns to people who told you that there is no increase in asaba there may not be increase for you but there is increase everybody is a giver they are not just giving to you but they are givers under a certain condition they will give there is a pattern for power there is a pattern for increased grace there is a pattern for favor are we together now yes let me challenge you even as a man of god don't say people are not coming to my church this conference has shown you that there are still enough people 
available people under certain circumstances they will come the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather the knowledge of the ways of god my life changed miraculously when i found that secret today by the grace of god we do the things that we do for the kingdom on the strength of that pattern i can guarantee you that the sick will be healed today i can guarantee you that your press will be delivered it is not pride it is the excellency of the pattern i can guarantee you that the anointing of the spirit will come upon someone yes sir when i travel i travel with the patterns when i speak the patterns are by my side for someone you need to settle down and be a student of the ways of god learn what it takes to excel in your life to excel in ministry hallelujah back to the example again to the glory of god when we're about to put the conference where to put the lord gave us an instruction and this was what the lord told me number one the meeting was going to hold in a weekday if you know anything about organizing programs overseas you don't put programs in a weekday because people are always working they have bills to pay housing bills there are people doing multiple jobs so when you organize a program in the united kingdom if you have a membership of 300 members sincerely you're a great man you are doing well those guys don't go to church and now you hire the largest indoor auditorium in the entire united kingdom not that you have a branch there not that you are collaborating with other ministries by the instruction of the lord then you do a program on a wednesday and a thursday then the lord gave me an instruction he said there is a wrong narrative that the church the people have had about the church i want to use this meeting to correct because of that never mention money and do not collect any offering no mention of money a workforce of 2,000 people plus which is a miracle on its own if you hold a conference with 2,000 people that is a miracle plus plus and yet that is a workforce what grace brought them are we together I hope you don't think I'm bragging I'm challenging you when you understand the ways of God your life will become a living wonder it's not that you will do signs and wonders you will become the wonder yourself hallelujah to be fair and honest with you those who were responsible for the facility when they saw the number of registrations and the, the spaces were exhausted they were surprised who is this person doesn't have a church yet in um, the uk where are you coming from you are not maybe a secular musician that is being promoted by you know other brands and so on and so forth where did you get the money to pay for that kind of thing and you did not beg anybody you didn't borrow from any bank you didn't collect from any loan no loan no nothing and you are not collecting offering then feeding over two thousand people there are things you don't pretend if you do not understand the ways now you may have the resources but how about the people more than 40 percent or 50 percent of the people in that auditorium they came from outside of manchester on a weekday can i tell you the ways of god turn any man to a miracle man of god don't tell me nobody wants to give me to build church <clears throat> humble yourself take responsibility there is something i have not found you call for a healing meeting and pray for the sick anybody healed come out nobody comes out and you say it's a lie you are just it's not true they, they are not healed go and get the pattern do you believe what i'm teaching you patterns for on the glory of god every time you find the pattern you have found the secret to the glory i remember when i was studying about the dynamics of the anointing i said lord i cannot go to the nations just with a message i need to understand the dynamics of your power and your glory and then the pattern came someone you are seated here right now but you see your prophetic destiny is beyond asaba but the reason why god cannot announce you is because you have not become a student of patterns 
if God should allow you to get to the next phase of ministry you will not be able to rise hallelujah it's like a military man who does not know how to shoot a gun he does not know how to throw the grenade what are you doing in the war front you will die immediately even if there is no enemy you will die yourself of incompetence the stage is not where you learn the wilderness is where you learn the stage is a place of performance in this case of your assignment are we together it's important let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me listen to me i will give you one more and then we'll pray i want us to pray because i sense that there are people who need to carry something from heaven in this place even before the night till today i remain a student of knowledge there are many things about god i do not know there are many things about his ways i do not know i am not ashamed of admitting that i do not know my assignment is to remain a student of scripture do not let what you know stop you from knowing what you need to know first corinthians 8 2 let's read it together first corinthians 8 2 first corinthians 8 2 media give it to us first corinthians not colossians first corinthians 8 2 let's read one to read and if any man thinks that he knoweth anything uh-huh as he ought to know there is a standard for every result and if you have not attained unto that standard by light you cannot command that result do you believe what I'm, I'm teaching you let me speak to somebody here you may be a campus fellowship president you are somebody that God do you know that the next I truly believe with all my heart that the next apostolic and prophetic move within this city some of the people who will spearhead that move are in this place sitting right now i truly believe it with my heart and don't think god cannot use you no you are not yet on tv you are not yet on the internet you are in the cave of adulam he's still working on you he brought you to this conference because there is a birthing there is an ignition there is something that he's doing in your heart let your spirit holy spirit rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of power rest on me rest on me rest on me the spirit of revelation is coming on four people i'm seeing this in the spirit i just saw like a book open and the lord is saying it's your season four of you let your spirit spirit of life rest on me rest on me bring them out let your spirit rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me.
rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me I'd like you to be very sensitive there are four of them that I saw in the spirit four you will never be the same you are drinking of this wine bring them out rest on me rest on me oh rest on me rest on me rest on me oh rest on me arando salegebeda everyone pray in the spirit pray in the spirit Pray in the spirit for these four I stretch my hands towards you let that light now come on you drink of that grace in the name of Jesus I release that grace upon you dimensions of revelation by the spirit of the living God help her just hold her carefully so she does in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the spirit of prophetic a prophetic teacher you are a teacher but it will be by the spirit I'm seeing the number six many of you this grace you are seeing on this stage is coming on you bring them out a prophetic teacher you will begin to compare spiritual things with spiritual. Are you praying? Ah, the eyes that see, you will see things that others have not seen in scripture. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Prophetic teachers, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. You will begin to teach the word with power, profound access to illumination. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Listen, listen. I want you to be tired of your spiritual level and say, Father, a higher level in the spirit. Turn that to your prayer now. A higher level in the spirit a higher level help that gentleman so he doesn't need a higher level in the spirit a higher level in the spirit if you're a pastor here please pray you're a missionary you are a, you're a, an intercessor King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Pray for one minute. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Those guys wearing the red vest are the worshippers, huh? I just saw like three of you. There is a dealing that God is passing you through. And for one of you, you are going to image a profound prophetic worshipper. Prophetic worshipper. That grace, I stretch my hands towards you. May that oil rest on you now. May that oil rest on you now. 
there's one of you I see in the spirit you have the zeal for worship but your capacity is very small very very small you will not be able to sing his praises to the nations like that you will need capacity in the spirit are you still praying in one minute are there people of prayer in this place come on where are the warriors of prayer in Asaba? take the next two minutes and let's pray where are they men who understand the mysteries of the altar you're not wasting your time we're wrapping up soon Sibere shobareka tuska liga brande ke berekos yata ekra kata beleka ta praska ta bereka ti barus yata sada belende beretos kavrej ikria ta kata frosko to beleka ti bras iberetos so beka ta beleka ta pranda ka baratos yata in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please sit down very quickly. I will pray on these ones. I need to finish what I'm giving you. If I leave it without finishing, it will affect your understanding. Be sensitive now. The waters has been stirred. Will not stay unnecessarily long. But God is doing something. Holy. Holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Hosanna Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of our Number five, there are six, but I will give you five. For all those who are in front here, the impartations that you have received, I pray for you that the dealing of the spirit that you need to go through to emerge, carrying and maintaining these various graces that have come upon you, the strength to stay with the spirit, let it be released upon you capacity to remain with the spirit until you become let it be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen they can return to their seats let's take number five what is the fifth foundational knowledge that you need to have is God helping someone number five you must know your adversary the devil you will never be able to reign glorious if they are still under the anointing just leave them when they are fine they can go back to their seat listen the fifth foundational knowledge that you must have as far as your faith adventure is concerned is that you must know your adversary the devil first peter chapter 5 from verse 8 and 9 first peter 5 8 and 9 jesus first peter 5 8 and 9 someone in the congregation your hand is going to start shaking uncontrollably uncontrollably i will tell you what is happening to you your hands your hands shaking uncontrollably there is an impartation that is happening to your hands and more of that will be released upon the congregation tonight but there is the grace for signs and for wonders is coming upon your hands this is what god is revealing to me your hands that oil 
is dripping like the dew of Hammon coming upon your hands don't say why me it is how God works in the name of Jesus the grace to walk upon I hope they are strong enough to go the grace to receive of that impartation and that with it God will use you to heal the sick you will take his healing power to the nations in dimensions and proportions that you have not seen before dimensions and proportions you have not seen before dimensions and proportions you have not seen before I ignite your spirit man you carry that fire dimensions and proportions you have not seen before don't bring them out don't worry you don't have to bring them out just just leave them where they are you must know your adversary the devil let's finish up be sober first Peter 5 and verse 8 be vigilant he says because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world he says be sober be vigilant he calls satan your adversary listen to me if you do not understand satan and his schemes the bible says for we are not ignorant of his devices there is a way satan walks and if you do not know satan uses deception he says but i fear less even as satan beguiled eve that he will come to beguile you through subtlety satan deceives satan manipulates satan uses the tool of witchcraft witchcraft in its essence is not about drinking blood and eating human flesh the word witchcraft in the bible means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you are we together now to cause a man to err using the tool of deception is the essence of witchcraft the way satan works has never changed his strategies remain the same can be uniquely carved out for an individual but he has a threefold assignment and it remains so forever the most concise description of satan's operation was given by jesus himself in john chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy you know that satan has visited a life because you search for these threefold evidences stealing killing destruction it says but i am come that ye may have life and that you will have it more abundantly hallelujah satan for you it was paul who helped us to understand the, uh, the organogram of the satanic kingdom he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places he begins to arrange them when jesus came and met the madman in gadara he said what is your name and he said i am legion for we are many satan has an organized satanic kingdom he launches his arsenals against the saints not carelessly in fact the weapons that come to the believer are fashioned it says no weapon fashioned do you know what it means to fashion most of you fabricate things around the east here to fashion a thing is that you must design it to fit if you are designing a cupboard you must calibrate everywhere make sure that it will fit the space given so satan looks at your life you are the one rising and from your rising 30 people in your family will rise so a weapon is fashioned against you you are the preacher that is standing for righteousness and if you go down with you will go 1000 people so instead of satan attacking the 1000 people he would rather attack the one who is helping the 1000 people to stand weapons are fashioned if you do not know satan you will fall into many pits 
in the life of every believer the temptation that happened to Jesus will happen to every believer every provided you are on earth the temptation that Satan brought to Jesus will come to you temptation number one was a temptation of individualism turning the power of God to use it for selfish gain turn this stone to bread turn these members to your profit focus on your stomach utilize the spiritual resources you have been given and manipulate people to feed your stomach and Jesus resisted that temptation the second temptation will come to you in the area of your spirituality took him to a holy mountain and he said fall down that one will wait for you till you become a champion in the spirit satan will not bring that temptation when you are starting until men look up to you for an inspiration where your life is the reason why their prayer life has remained they look every time they are discouraged god will use your face and satan will say if i bring this man of god down in asaba using whatever weapon it will a deal a great blow to the church then he will bring that temptation the second temptation is a temptation of spiritual champions be complacent fall down after all he will put his angels charge over you the temptation foot in the kingdom you must discipline yourself to build a systemic prayer life write it down please the first key to bearing fruit in the kingdom is the discipline to build a systemic prayer life I didn't say pray if you only pray you will not be powerful you must build a systemic prayer life the apostolic model that was given to the church was that they had a time called the hour of prayer that was the time that Paul that um, Peter and John went to pray that they met the man at Gate beautiful can I tell you there is no gift of prayer there is the spirit of prayer and supplication that helps men the spirit generally helps our infirmity but i want you to know that prayer is labor in the spirit no matter how gifted you are prayer is not easy for any serious person it is discipline to pray first thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing pray without ceasing 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint mark 11 24 whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them james 5 13 is any man afflicted let him pray ladies and gentlemen when you build a systemic prayer life this is the apostolic model for growth maturity and fruit bearing show me a believer who submits himself to praying i show you a believer who will attain unto maturity there's no time to teach on prayer but i need to tell you this what makes your prayer powerful is not just the energy that is dissipated your prayer must be fervent and it must be heartfelt it says the fervent effectual what makes your prayer fervent is that your heart is involved but what makes your prayer effectual is the word compliancy of your prayer if you are not praying by the scriptures you are praying amiss again if you are not praying by the scripture you pray by sentiments you are praying amiss you may be praying fervently but you are not praying effectually what makes your prayer effectual is the word compliancy of your prayer secret number one to bear fruit you must build by discipline and grace a systemic prayer life no matter how busy i am there's no excuse to be prayerless are we together no matter how busy i am I've already settled the prayer for this meeting now and the evening meeting as I return back to rest the balance of it will now be there you see if you don't pray truly you will not be powerful 
I can tell you, just believe it. I'm not just talking of need driven prayer. Genuine prayer. You wake up when others are sleeping and reprogram the spiritual climate around your life. I'm praying for anyone here whose prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, let it be fanned back to flames now. Number two, the second secret to bearing fruit. The second secret to bearing fruit is that you must build your life on the word of God. Matthew 4.4 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. You must build your life. Live by the word of God. Build your life. Live by the word of God. If you take away the word of God out of your life, you will not excel. You will not excel. Listen, there are three ways to grow in the word. Number one, study. 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 Read your Bible and study your Bible. Number two, listening. Listen to scripture. Listen to scripture. Thanks to the advantage of technology, what is written today was first the ears of people holy men wrote as they were inspired study scripture listen to scripture number three speak scripture speak scripture study scripture speak scripture don't forget this study scripture speak scripture study scripture speak scripture isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 isaiah 8 20 let me show you a, let me show you one scripture i'd like us to read one to read please to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them when a believer carries light there is a way you speak and there is a way if you do not speak it is because there is no light in you the three ways we maximize the ministry of the word is to study the word is to listen to the word get it internalize it into your spirit and then to speak the word hallelujah you want to bear fruit number one build a systemic prayer life number two invest in scripture by studying by listening by learning get teaching on mp3 there are bibles on mp3 there are there are the work has already been done you go on the internet there are audio visuals on healing there are audio visuals on who you are in christ there are people who have paid the price there are the words of jesus do you know that using the power of audio you can listen to a whole chapter in 10 minutes there are books that are short in 10 minutes you always will not have the time because of our busy world today you always will not have the time to spend two hours three hours every day no you will not have that time that is the truth responsibility beckons on you you have to create a system you can wake up in the morning and an atmosphere of worship is playing like this and then you have scripture in 10 minutes something has entered your spirit And then number three, the third secret to bearing fruit is that you must contend for genuine spiritual empowerment. That's what we'll be coming to receive in the night. Contend for genuine spiritual empowerment. If you are not empowered, you will not bear fruit. If you are not empowered, you will not bear fruit. I'll stop here so that we'll pray. I've taught you two things this afternoon. Number one, reminding you that the journey of the believer ends up in glory and that not every kind of spiritual knowledge is useful for your building, your rising, your excelling in the spirit. And that among the many kinds of spiritual knowledge you need to learn, there are five of them that I've revealed to you. 
fundamental foundational spiritual truth that you must know if you want to become a believer of stature and now i have in summary taught you that to bear fruit in the spirit because god desires our bearing fruit it is in our bearing fruits that we demonstrate that we are his disciples there are two ways according to scripture to show that we are his disciples one when we love one another two when we bear fruit one when we love one another you may want to write that the two biblical indices that you are the disciple of jesus is that one you have love for one another as you love god and number two that you bear fruit and that for that fruit bearing to happen in your life you must number one create by discipline and grace a systemic prayer life pray every day pray always pray without ceasing give time to pray for edification according to luke 9 29 evolve into a stronger more powerful wiser more spiritual more discerning more energetic you in the spirit and then submit yourself to the ministry of the word according to Acts 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word by studying to show yourself approved by listening to gain understanding and by speaking let the redeemed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so and then of course finally contend for spiritual empowerment tonight we are coming to finish up the discussion that we started and then i will connect this discussion to your theme i will show you how all of these revelations culminate to walking in open doors hallelujah can we pray for two minutes our time is stretched please stand I want you for this prayer session may I request please pair yourselves into three we're going to pray if you can't find three people just look for two people two or three but no one alone two or three hello Madonai. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Come on, sing it. Your Hello, Imadona. Hallelujah. Now, you are holding the hand of your neighbor because it is a mystery. The Bible says, if any two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be established unto them. The first prayer point is that I want you to take a minute to intercede over your neighbor and say, Father, weakness in the spirit, let it be swallowed up by strength. Go ahead and pray. Weakness in the spirit. Weakness that reflects as carnality. Weakness that reflects itself as bankruptcy of understanding weakness that reflects itself as lack of zeal for the things of God come on Asaba I expect people to be praying in the name of Jesus Christ it's time for mighty men to rise it's time for strong men to rise from in gathering global it's time for strong men to rise from asaba here in the name of jesus christ man of the spirit man of power man of grace man of fire go ahead and pray every weakness every limitation in the spirit every encumbrance every weight the sin that don't easily beset my neighbor my friend my prayer partner lord let it be swallowed up go ahead and pray are there people of prayer here it's time to be spiritual it's time to soar like the eagles time to soar like the eagles 
the days of spiritual carelessness awake thou that sleepest spiritual slumber it's time for it to give way you need to evolve into a and verse 8 very profound scripture and God he says we usually use this scripture for offerings and it is applicable there but the essence of it is beyond offering the Bible says God is able to make all grace say all grace every possibility in the kingdom has a grace dimension connected to it giving has a grace healing has a restoration is connected to a grace that is going to be your prayer all grace father whatever dimension of grace that is needed for the next prophetic season of my life may it be released bound towards me someone is praying there is a grace to pray there is a grace to fast there is a grace to give there is a grace to love God there is a grace to pray I say it again there is a grace to study and understand scripture there is a grace to love men there is a grace to be disciplined there is a grace to be diligent God is able to make all grace there is a grace to do exploit in your field of endeavor in business all grace all grace all grace this is our final prayer all grace Lord, let all grace be made available in my life. Every dimension of grace. Bring in power. Bring in wisdom. Bring in efficiency to my spirit work. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me speak over your life psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3 we're wrapping up blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of the scornful verse 2 says but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day and night my prophetic word for you is in verse 3 he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth fruit in season from today everything that has made you barren in the spirit barren in finances barren in influence barren in ministry by the power that raised christ from the dead i bring you to a level of fruitfulness in the spirit I bring you to a level of fruitfulness in the spirit can I tell you by the privilege of God's grace there is nothing today that God has granted grace to put our hands to do that has not worked there is a grace that brings you to a realm where whatsoever he doeth shall prosper I pray for you where you have failed as a result of this prophetic and apostolic conference i'm placing an unction upon your head go and succeed go and succeed let it be clear that ebenezer has come to help you in the name of jesus christ
I feel stirred to do this, even though we'll be praying in the evening. I feel stirred to speak over your finances. If you don't believe it, you can put down your hand and sit down. But listen, listen. Believe me when I tell you, God can help men financially. Many of you here, you want to serve God. But the cancer that is eating up your life is this finance thing. It's a strategy that has been one of the most effective strategy in the kingdom of darkness to distract the saints. I vowed a vow before God that I will never manipulate anybody in ministry for money. I vowed a vow before God that by his grace I will work in financial integrity in ministry. I have seen the disadvantage of not having financial resources and I've seen the ease that comes to your life when you are marvelously helped of God. And when this happened to me, I made, I made up my mind that everywhere I have the opportunity to go and pray, it is part of my apostolic mandate to release this grace, even in this area of supplies. It's not just about money. What you need truly is the help of God. There are many of you, if God sorts you out financially, that's when you will know that you have a lot of time. Most of your time is going on serving mammon is the reason why you cannot serve God acceptably. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. The God that helps men, the God that helps ministries, the God that helps men of God, the God that helps businessmen, bringing them out of financial shame, bringing them out of calamities, the one who helped this man you see standing before you, I call upon my God because you have believed in the name of Jesus, let the power to prosper rest upon your head. Let the power to prosper rest upon your head. In the name of Jesus, God knows that when you love him, money has no effect on you. Materialism is not having materials is the influence of material resources on the position of god in your life you can be poor and still be materialistic the moment jesus is not the most exalted in your life it is materialism when we talk about wealth and prosperity we are not advocating carnality and lust a desire for material things as against your passion for jesus but that these are the tools one of the six benefits according to psalm 102 is that he satisfied your mouth with good things this is god it is one of his benefits except it is not the god of the bible he forgives your sins he heals your diseases he delivers you he crowns you with glory and loving kindness he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your strength is renewed like your youth he says satisfy me early with your goodness i'm praying again for someone before evening i don't know how god will do it you may not see wind you may not see rain but i call upon the god of my covenant may someone rise by god and surprise you financially in the name of jesus the son of the living god amen and amen so for those of you who are here and those of you who are watching by way of internet a few hours after now we are beginning the miracle service in the evening it will be an extraordinary moment with the spirit it's not only a miracle service it's a miracle and impartation service come with your heart open finally the grace needed for your destiny will land on you and you'll be turned like Saul into another man in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands and give Jesus praise dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye